Well, good morning, good morning. Good morning to you, and I'm sure for many of you, especially if you're one who grew up in the 60s, 70s, 80s, 90s, that tune that I opened up just now with is familiar to you. And I opened up with that, you know, it was based on a conversation I was having with my aunt last night in terms of, do you ever feel like we're in the twilight zone? And so I was teasing her last night. I said, you know what? I'm going to open the show up tomorrow morning with the Twilight Zone theme. And sure enough, that's what I just did. I opened up with the theme from that old show, The Twilight Zone. Because honestly, in all honesty, I honestly feel like Rod Serling is going to pop out somewhere and say, you have entered the Twilight Zone. Uh, because that's the way it seems like it seems like that's exactly where we are in, that we are in the Twilight Zone. If you don't know who you're listening to, this is your host, Mark Medley. We come to you most Saturdays live here from 6 to 9 a.m. right here on Brave New Radio on GoBrave.org. And so, again, I, I and when I say about, you know, feeling like being in the Twilight Zone and I'm not a news junkie anymore. At one point, I did used to religiously come on, come home and flick on CNN immediately. I haven't done that now in nearly three years. But I do keep up with what's going on between social media as well as a few news apps that I have on my phone. I will scan them. And as I scan those, it is absolutely amazing <laughs> of the th- events that are occurring around the world. And so that's why, you know, I'm going to do it in a couple of minutes. I'm going to kick off the show reading from the two Ian Le Van Zandt books. I'm going to kick off reading from those because we have to have some positivity in a very negative world. And when I say very negative world, I mean very negative world. So I am going to open up with my opening song of something good is going to happen to you. I'm going to go ahead and and put that back on and open up with that so that my spirit can be encouraged that something good is going to happen to us. Because if you really look around you and you're really awake and you're aware of everything that's going on, I have a feeling I'm not the only one who feel like we must be in some other world. We must be in The Twilight Zone. So Anthony Brown. Now I started the show off with the Twilight Zone theme. Because even with all that said, there are times when I actually feel as if I am in the Twilight Zone. I sit here because as I told you, I don't turn on the television. So I don't watch the news on television. But I will scan the various news apps. And I can very quickly skim you know, the article or the title or the heading or what have you. And it is amazing to me the significant number of people who are willing to put a thug back in the White House. That's the only descriptive that I can come up with. I don't know about anybody else. I can't speak for anybody else. But when you start looking at the behaviors, the, 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 the words, the tone, what's being said, how it's being said, that's nothing but... A thug. Let's be real. Let's call it what it is. We have a significant amount of people who are willing to put a thug back in the White House. Now, that's not to say we haven't had thugs in the White House before, but not to this degree, not to this level. All right. Just a straight up thug that you have so many people willing To put back in the highest office in the land amazes me. That's why I say that's one of the reasons I feel like I'm in the twilight zone. Like, am I the only one seeing it this way? And am I the only one that's kind of processing what's going on here? That's a straight up thug. And yet, if that thug was of a different skin color, there's no way in the world that thug would have gotten that far. That's what I'm talking about in the twilight zone. You could have a pristine non-thug of a different skin color that would have still wound up being lambasted, probably imprisoned, or what have you. Certainly not supported. At very least, certainly not supported. Pristine record. And yet you have an almost 
for the most part, most likely could have, and you never know because this is Twilight Zone, so maybe not convicted thug that has an opportunity, a chance to maybe wind back up in the White House again. So that kind of blows me away. So now I'm in a meeting the other day, and the person who was leading the meeting, we were talking about, you know, you know education and systems of war and everything that's going on in the world. And she says there are over 21 wars going on in the world. Now, this, the, the one in the Middle East is not the only one that's going on. There are over 21 wars going on simultaneously around the world. We hear about one or two, the big ones, but they are like multiple wars going on around the world. Again, I'm sitting there like, am I in the twilight zone? Then I continue to scan through the apps and I see where P. Diddy, so a young lady is now bringing a lawsuit against P. Diddy. Because apparently, she's saying over the years, she's been seriously abused by Diddy over the years in multiple and various ways. I read that because I, we already know what happened with Bill Cosby. I don't understand that. I already know what happened with R. Kelly. Don't understand that. And when I say don't understand it, I don't mean I don't under, I don't mean I don't understand the consequences. I don't understand why they were acting in that behavior. I don't understand why people of what they have would act the way they were act and ultimately convicted of. Because my thinking is this, if you get to that level, you don't have to do all that to get a woman. If you get to that level, you don't have to do all that to have any sex. If you get to that level, you don't have to do all that to have anybody to hang around you. If you, you don't have to do all of that because that's going to come with the nature of being a celebrity. I mean, I have been in, I have traveled back in the 80s. My aunt was married to the cousin of George Gervin, Iceman. For those of you basketball buffs out there, you all know George Gervin during that time was the man. This was prior to Michael Jordan. Maybe Jordan came, Jordan was a pup whenever Gervin was older and about to retire. I think Michael had just entered the league. But prior to Michael Jordan and all that, like Ice Gervin and all these guys, they were basketball. My aunt was married to to. Iceman's cousin to George Gervin's cousin. And so whenever the Spurs would come to town, we would go to the game. Whether they played the Nets or the Knicks, we would go to the game and then had the opportunity to hang out after the game with the ball players. When I tell you when we would get to the hotel, the women that were flocking that lobby, unreal. When I tell you, I mean the lobby as we would walk through attempting to get to the various hotel rooms just to get from the door because they had found out where the team was staying to get from the door to the registration desk to the elevator to get to the room wall to wall women. I'm sharing that story to say there is no reason for R. Kelly, Bill Cosby, P. Diddy accused for having to do what they did. Because by nature of being a ball player or an entertainer, an actor, actress, what have you, by nature, women and sex flock to them. So to have to be coercing somebody, drugging somebody, abusing somebody, doesn't make sense to me. Again, that's why I feel like I'm in the twilight zone. Because I'm reading this, this young lady's account of everything over the years. Puff Daddy, P. Diddy, Sean Combs, whatever he calls himself, has done. And it's just not making a whole lot of sense. Now, of course, he's denying it, as they all do. And, of course, they're saying, you know, she's just out to get paid. She's just out to defame him, so forth and so on. However, now this young lady, now that is coming out, is now, just like in the Cosby case and just like in the R. Kelly case, now others are coming out with similar stories. So we're going to kind of see where this goes as well. We're going to kind of see where this whole P. Diddy story goes I honestly hope it's not true. I can't sit here and try to defend either way. I can't defend her. I can't defend him. But I hope it's not true to a certain degree. Because P. Diddy is, again, this is another one. Diddy is not stupid. 
Sean Combs is an educated man. Sean Combs went to college, graduated college, understands the business, knows how to make money, so forth. So he's not stupid. Now, if there's another side of him that folks don't know or can't see that these women are seeing, that's something a little bit different. But I, I kind of hope it's not true because it's not needed. Bill Cosby, I don't understand why he would have needed to drug anyone. Now, the question always comes up, well, these women knew what they were getting into and they were hanging with the celebrities. Obviously, they wanted something, too. They wanted something out of the deal. The fact that they were hanging with a Bill Cosby or the fact that they were hanging with a R. Kelly or the fact that they're hanging with a P. Diddy, they wanted something out of the deal, too. That could be true. But still, none of them deserve to be drugged. None of them deserve to be abused. None of them deserve to be urinated on. None of them deserve to be all these crazy things that have come out from these folks. That's what I mean by Twilight Zone. That's what I'm talking about. I was like, what world are we in? What planet are we on where people do things like that to each other? Because I posted on Facebook the other you can't make me believe. And a lot of things when I'm talking about you, if you follow me on Facebook, you'll have seen the post. But you cannot make me believe that people do not know what they are doing when they're mistreating other people. I, I, I just do not believe that you don't know that you're mistreating somebody else when you're doing that. Now, I could be wrong again because, you know, we're in the twilight zone. I, I, I could be wrong. But I just find it hard to believe that you don't consciously know that you're mistreating someone else. I've shared this story with you all before in terms of most of the time when students come to my office has gotten into a conflict. I will pose the question, would what you did to him, because my school is all boys, so it's always a him, would what you did to him, would you want someone to do that to you? Just about 100% of the time, the answer comes back, no. Okay, so you wouldn't want what you did to that child done to you, yet you had no problem doing it to him. Again, does not make sense to me. Twilight Zone. Maybe, you know, I'm probably going to use this time that I'm spending with you as my podcast and I'm going to title it The Twilight Zone. I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use what I'm saying right now and put that as a part of my podcast because this is the radio show. This is not the podcast, but every now and again, I will use what I'm saying on the radio show on the podcast and vice versa. Sometimes I will say on the podcast, I'll use it here on the radio show. But I think I am actually going to use, you know, the, the chat time that I just had with you. I think I'm actually going to use that on the podcast and I'm going to title it The Twilight Zone because that's what I feel like I'm in as I sit here and I scan around the world. As I take a look on my news apps, as I see the significant amount of people who are so willing to put a thug back in the White House, as I sit around and I look at all the different accusations of various people that there's no way in the world they should have to do it. And then when I get on the local level, I see there's almost like a shooting in the city almost daily. The city that I was born and raised in, I look and almost see that there's some type of a shooting or a murder going on daily. Actually, when I was out in Colorado last week, it popped up on my phone. Another shooting in Patterson, New Jersey. I was like, wow, I'm way out here in Colorado and I'm seeing, uh, learning about a shooting in Patterson, New Jersey. Almost a shooting daily. I mean, it's almost sadly, and I do mean sadly, back to Twilight Zone again. Sadly, almost like Wild West City. So yesterday, I get a student brought to my office Teacher comes in. I'd already dealt with multiple issues throughout the morning. And I was trying to get something done. I was trying to focus on the email that I was sending to the superintendent. And everybody kept tapping on my door. I'm trying to focus because I wanted the words to be right. I didn't want any grammatical errors. I didn't want any spelling errors. I didn't want any kind of errors because I'm sending it to the superintendent. So I'm trying to focus. Teacher taps on my door. He comes in with his phone. So I got an issue for you. And I tell him, I don't want to hear any issues right now. But he says, well, I say, all right, what is it? I'm playing with him. But he, he pulls up his phone. He shows me a screenshot of a website a child in his class was going to that was dealing with guns. I immediately pulled the child down. And when I tell you read this child a riot act, I mean read this child the riot act. And he looks at me because I'm telling him, don't you think we have enough killing going on in our city as it is for you to be sitting here looking up guns. I don't care if it's a toy gun. I don't care if it's a real gun. But for you to be sitting here on a web page when you were supposed to be studying something else, you're pulling up a web page about guns. Don't you think we have enough killing going on? 
And he looks at me, and this is where I really like read him the riot act. And I literally told him, I need it. Based on that comment, I ought to put my foot in your behind. But in any event, <laughs> um, he looks at me and he says, in the most innocent little way, but that's not killing. So I had to explain to him, no, son, you're not dealing, first off, with a stupid person. I know exactly what I said. No, it's not killing. However, the thought process leads to killing. The fact that you're sitting here with a gun on your mind, the fact that you're sitting here during class time going to gun websites means that at some point a gun is on your mind. So the fact that a gun is on your mind means at some point you were going to go out and either try to purchase or order that toy gun or a real gun because either one of them can get you killed, whether it's a toy gun or whether it's a real gun, you could wind up dead. So after reading him the riot act, I showed him the various YouTube videos of the Tamir Rice case because he and Tamir are about the same age. And I said, you understand, you need to understand, son, I'm trying to save your life here. You need to understand, son, that that same thing that you just saw in that video with Tamir Rice, don't you think that can't happen to you? Don't you think that can't happen here in Patterson, New Jersey? Don't you think that that cannot happen to you? Now, let's say you make the argument, Mr. Medley, but it's a toy. Well, that's what Tamir Rice got killed over. He got killed over a toy. So, I mean, these are the kind of conversations I'm having on like a daily basis with kids trying to change minds. And that's why when you, so if you wonder why with Mr. Medley or Mark, why do you feel like you're in the Twilight Zone? As I start putting all these things together, you can't help but wonder when is Rod Serling going to pop out? And say you've just entered or you are in the Twilight Zone. All right. Well